All right, how's it going, Neil? So Synology has just released the DS925 Plus, and this is the very first of the 25 series models that we've seen on Synology. And it's a fairly decent spec bump. There is a upgraded CPU to having twice as many cores at basically the same clock rate, as well as finally having built-in 2.5 gigabit networking, which is something that everybody has absolutely been waiting on. And I was going to lose it if this generation of NASes did not come with built-in 2.5 gigabit networking from Synology. It also has a new expansion unit that is all USB-C, the new DX525, which is the new expansion bay. But even with all of those quality of life upgrades, this unit is by far going to be the single most controversial NAS that Synology has ever released, in my opinion. So right off the bat, this right here is a DS923+, plus, not a 925+. Plus and they look remarkably similar. My 925 is in the mail, and I've not received it just yet, but I will absolutely be doing a review on that, as well as all of the new 25 models. But we have all the key data, and really what this unit boils down to is the new hard drive lock-in. So this right here is the new DS925 Plus page. If you're looking for it, you often can't find it on the English pages. They have not been updated yet, so you have to go to another country and then often you can find it there, and that is pretty much how you get to it. And overall, it's a pretty basic spec bump. The CPU on here jumped from the Ryzen V1500 to the 1500B, which basically just doubled our core count at essentially the exact same clock rate, but the memory and total memory stays the exact same. And now, instead of having the built-in two one gigabit network ports on the back here, they have been upgraded to 2.5 gigabit ports. However, with that, we go in here, you will see something sorely missing, especially compared to the last generation. There is no port on the back for 10 gig upgrades. So we have essentially traded two one gigabit ports and the ability to upgrade to 10 gigabit for two, two and a half gigabit ports with no ability to upgrade to 10 gigabit. While a lot of people will probably wish they had the ability to upgrade to 10 gigabit, for this unit, I actually am totally fine with that. I would have preferred it right at the beginning. I wish they didn't add this adding card from the beginning. But this unit, if you're putting four hard drives in there in RAID 5 configuration, you're not missing out on that much staying with 2.5 gigabit versus 10 gigabit. I really end up liking 2.5 gigabit a lot of time compared to 10 gigabit due to just power draw and other things like that and just easy of use of adapters and switches. 10 gigabit has just a huge power draw and that's why all adapters for laptops are huge and the cards are way more expensive. You can get a 2.5 gigabit networking adapter for about 20 bucks whereas a 10 gigabit one is $200. If that shows you how much more complex 10 gigabit is to make than 2.5 gigabit. So I think it's really appropriate for a four bay unit. Some people who are going to be putting all SSDs in this are really going to be missing it. And for those people who are making it all SSD NAS and needing that throughput, this is just not going to be the NAS for you. I would highly recommend looking at something like probably the 1525 or the 1825 or a unit that is really designed for those faster throughputs. I hope that the five bay 1525 does in fact have the 10 gigabit. That's where I would say it starts becoming necessary. But for a four bay unit with mechanical hard drives, I probably am not going to miss it too much. And I'll be honest with you, a lot of time that I would see people deploying the 923 plus with a 10 gigabit card, I felt like it was overkill and really just wish they had a 2.5 gigabit alternative. So that may be controversial, but that's my opinion. But that is the least controversial thing on this unit. What is going to be the huge controversial thing is what I alluded to at the beginning of this video, and that is the new hard drive lock-in requirements. If we come into our specs here, we can see that under hard drives, it states compatible hard drives are mandatory. Please consult our compatibility list before purchasing hard drives. For more details, please refer to this article. And right here, we can see their facts for hard drive compatible storage starting in 2025. And this article I'll actually leave down in the description below, just came out actually. And it actually 
this is the first time Synology has fully addressed and written out what their policies are for hard drives. Previously, it was very much like you'd talk to a media person. They really wouldn't tell you anything. And they would say, oh, this is it. And they never wrote a full policy out. However, now they have written a full policy out here. They are stating that essentially they're breaking up their hard drive policy into two distinct sections, hard drives and SSDs. While they say the reason that they've got these two policies is for making sure that there's different technology considerations, the real part of this is the drivability section right here. Synology has a lot of trouble sourcing SSDs, way easier sourcing hard drives. If you look, the SSDs are really often out of stock and in my experience, a lot harder to find and also way more expensive than the competition. Whereas the hard drives often actually, if you get the plus series, are in the kind of regular ballpark price. So with that, they've actually added the ability for SSDs to stay on the compatibility list. So this is actually really great news for SSD people because you can buy an eight terabyte SSD and stick them in these systems. And right here, they will show up as unverified, but it'll let you build the pool. Great news is a relative term here. So after we've split up our hard drives and SSDs, then there is actually writing out which series there are. And the way they're set up here is the value and J models are going to be able to throw any drives in there. And so what they're doing here is they are allowing the super low end models, the value series and J models to bring whatever drives are to still try to capture that market. Well, I'm glad they did that. I also do feel like now we're getting so complex with the hard drive requirements here that as somebody who works on this stuff literally every day, I am still going to be having to refer back to every single one of these because the policies are so unique to every single series model and everything rather than just a blanket compatibility, which is kind of crazy. But the policy going forward now is only drives on the compatibility list will be able to be used to create storage pools. And we're going to talk about the compatibility list in a second here but they will allow people to migrate their existing pool, which is really, really, really key. So if you've got an 1821 plus with eight Iron Wolves in it, you are going to be able to take those out, stick them in an 1825 plus, and still just migrate on over. I'm interested to see if it's still going to say unverified, only time will tell with that, but they still will allow you to build them. And a key thing is here, that I do want to touch on is this will not be retroactive. This will only apply to the 2025 series and beyond. So you don't have to worry about DSM-8 kicking out your hard drive compatibility and breaking your pool. At least, I really hope not from this policy. This is stating that, hey, it is only by the actual model, which I would expect, and it's good that they have fully addressed here. And at least that way, you have the option at time of purchase to choose if you want to keep with Synology or not. Okay, so that is the new article. Now, if you want to build a pool with the 2025 series and beyond, they have to be on the compatibility list if you're buying mechanical hard drives. Otherwise, it is not going to let you build a pool. However, you will be able to migrate your existing hard drive pool over with unknown repercussions in terms of the compatibility list and if it'll show up as unverified. So now I would have no problem with this in the world if there was an up-to-date large spanning compatibility list. Synology is not wrong that there have been times where people have bought drives that were not compatible and it has caused issues. However, that was a fairly isolated incident. I've seen it happen very rarely and only with really cheap drives. And there was like one or two batches of bad Iron Wolf firmware like six years ago that did genuinely cause issues with Synologies. Basically, there was a firmware version of Iron Wolf's that certain Synologies would just cause huge, huge, huge interrupts with the system and they would just grind to a halt. That was the only time I've ever seen that other than people buying SMR drives and wondering why they're running super slow. So while this was actually a problem at one point, it's very, very, very small. And it would be reasonable for a company who had a large compatibility list that was actually tested in what people were buying to go through that and make sure that, hey, drives are tested and making sure that the product is going to be guaranteed to a certain extent. That, in my opinion, would be reasonable especially if there were actual issues, which there were a few in the past. However, the problem with this 
is the compatibility list for the DS925 Plus currently only has Synology drives in there. If there were any other brands other than Synology, there would actually be a button that you can clearly see is missing here that would actually have you the ability to drop down and say third party drives. And as of right now, there are no compatible third party drives. And this is why this policy sucks. So even when they do start populating this compatibility list, from what I've heard, they do actually expect to. The problem is, even if they do have Iron Wolf drives on there and your WD Reds, I am going to be really surprised if they are in capacities greater than 16 terabytes or whatever the maximum size of the Plus models are. And I am sure that you're never going to be able to have a compatible hard drive that is a larger than the current largest enterprise drive of Synology. And that's the problem with this. So you can right now buy 24 terabyte drives, which are 50% larger than these 16 terabyte drives. And right now this compatibility list is going to really limit your ability to do that. So if we look at the DS923 plus or the DS1522 plus, I'll show you what I'm talking about. We will see that one, this is that button I was talking about that's missing. And we will see that miraculously, while it's actually a pretty decent compatibility list of commonly used drives, somehow nothing is compatible that is greater than 16 terabytes. And that is what I'm worried about happening. So even if they do populate them with your Iron Wolves, your WD Reds, you're now also going to have to make sure you know what size they are, because apparently drives of different sizes are somehow differently compatible, but really they're just trying to protect their drive sales and not have a weird situation where you can buy a 1522 plus that somehow has more space than 1823 XS plus. I think that is the key problem that they're running into here. And I would really like to see them at least get up to the 20 terabyte iron walls. Please Synology, at least get up to there as that really does open up a very large amount of space for users. Okay. So that is the key issue with this 2025 model and all 2025. I'm gonna stop focusing on that here because we've already talked about it and this is about the 925 plus, but is also in my opinion, the reason why the 925 plus is the first one coming out. Because this right here is the DS 923 plus. It is a very recent system. And honestly, I would say this unit needs an upgrade less than anything else. And I think that is exactly why Synology has started with this unit. So the DS923 Plus came out about two years ago, and it still got a relatively good CPU in there, ability to upgrade large RAM, 10 gigabit upgrade ability. Honestly, a totally fine unit. There's not anything in here that they had to do to really redo it. And the reason this unit is coming out first, the DS925 Plus is coming out first, even though the DS1825 Plus is so much more needed, is the fact that it is going to take most of the media attention about the compatible hard drives. It's the same reason why Synology had the German newsroom post. They're easing us into it, and that's why we're starting with this unit. So that was my conspiracy theory. We can now go ahead and start talking about the specs of the DS925 Plus, and really talking about what has changed, because honestly, they've put in a pretty decent CPU in here. This is actually the exact same CPU that is in the DS1821 Plus and the DS1621 Plus right now. And I'll be completely honest with you, that, that is more than sufficient for NAS workflows. It's not Intel, so you don't have quick sync, so you're not gonna be using it for Plex transcoding, but for everything else, it's an incredibly powerful CPU. And unless you're running an insane amount of Docker containers, you're not really going to be maxing out the performance of this thing, especially with only having a 2.5 gigabit networking that specific CPU is able to saturate over two gigabytes of data per second from my testing. That is a very fast CPU, so it is not going to be the limiting factor for any really NAS-related operations. If we talk about having full-on server operations, you can obviously limit any CPU, but from a regular NAS unit, this is going to be more than powerful enough and a welcome bump. The RAM is the exact same as the DS923+. Plus. 4 gigs DDR ECC with the ability to go up to 32 gigs because it's got two DIMM slots and it's also got the exact same two NVMe slots on there. And now they've also got a new DX525 expansion unit. 
So the expansion unit is now going to be USB-C, which while I completely understand them adding it in there, is also going to confuse so many people because people often get confused between how a NAS works and a DAS works. And so they think they can just plug in directly in USB and access files, but don't realize that's not how NASs work. And so if you look right here, they've laid out very clearly expansion, but it is still going to confuse people because people who are just coming into a NAS, it is a lot different. And as I said at the beginning of this video, it is also sorely missing the ability to upgrade to 10 gigabit networking, but it's got the standard Kensington lock and looks pretty much identical to the DS923 plus, which is what we would absolutely expect. And finally, as for pricing, I would be shocked if they raised the MSRP from 599 USD from the 923 plus, given how similar the two units are and the very, very, very small changes, but you never know, especially with tariffs and everything, but I don't have final word on that, though I'm guessing it'll come in at 600 US dollars. And overall, in a vacuum, if we exclude out the 25 model lock-in, I think this would be a welcome upgrade for most people. However, the 25 hard drive lock-in is going to be an interesting time in really seeing how they handle the compatibility list and how quickly they add those drives on there. And there's going to be a lot of people who don't read these reviews and are used to buying Synologies and just throw their standard 24 terabyte Iron Wolf drives in there and literally cannot build a pool. And I think that's gonna rub a lot of people the wrong way. For the side of the world that is not looking for these massive storage builds, who are looking for like 40 terabytes usable say in a package like this, I think it's a great unit. They're gonna be able to buy the 16 terabyte Synology Plus series drives for pretty much the same price or cheaper or more. They're always right around this price of Iron Wolf drives and have a great experience. However, for people who are used to building out their custom systems and wanting to max out with 24 terabyte drives, these series are going to be super limited for that. And so that is just not going to be on the table for them. So with that, it's really up to you if this is the unit for you. If you have any other questions, put those down in the comments below and tell me your thoughts. I do really wanna see what happens to this compatibility list because Synology could go a few different ways with it. I'm just worried they're going to go really limited and really limit their units to way smaller drives than they actually can, given the fact that 24 terabytes are not that hard to come by for hard drive sizes anymore. And if you want to hire me, there's a link for that down in the description below. All right, have a good one. Bye.